Hey guys, Wells Knight here, and welcome back to Magic the Gathering Arena. Hope you guys are having an awesome day. I'm having a fantastic day. Today, I am bringing you a historic deck called Phyrexian Fight Club. And it is essentially a mono-black deck, splashing green only via dual lands for two fight spells. This is built around Phyrexian Obliterator, uh, which is kind of the centerpiece of the deck. Four black mana for a 5-5 five, five with trample, and whenever a source deals damage to it, that source's controller sacrifices that many permanents. Fight spells, where we have two, one of our creatures and one of their creatures fight, cause their creature to deal damage to Phyrexian Obliterator, Therefore, the source of that damage, a.k.a. their creature, has to sacrifice a bunch of stuff. So if we have the Phyrexian Obliterator, for example, fight an opponent's 4-4, they would have to sacrifice four permanents. Uh, so it's a very powerful effect if you can pull it off. Uh, as for the rest of the deck, we do have our two fight spells, four copies each. One of them is Blizzard Brawl, one green. We choose a target creature we don't uh, we control and a target creature we don't control. And if we control three or more snow permanents, the one we control gains plus one plus zero and gains indestructible until end of turn. And then those two creatures fight. So pretty good uh, means that we can potentially fight things that are bigger than Phyrexian Obliterator without actually losing our Obliterator. So that's pretty useful. It is at uh, sorcery speed, though. So our other fight spell is... Sky Shroud Ambush, two mana for an instant speed fight spell. One of our guys fights one of their guys, and if we win the fight, which means our guy survives and their guy doesn't, uh, we draw a card afterwards. As for the rest of our mana curve, uh, we've got a Shambling Ghast and Deadly Dispute combo here. One mana, one, one. When it dies, we can either give an opponent's creature minus one, minus one, or create a treasure token. Great thing to sacrifice to our four copies of Deadly Dispute, which make us sacrifice an artifact or creature, and then we draw two cards and create a treasure token. Helps us kind of dig through our deck for the pieces we're looking for. Also at two mana, we have four copies of Kite Sail Freebooter, uh, a flying one-two human pirate that when it enters the battlefield, we look at our opponent's hand and we can take a non-creature, non-land card from it and exile it until the freebooter leaves the battlefield. So it's a way to get some early game uh, stuff out of their hand. Great against uh, Tybalt's Trickery decks, for example. Or eh, maybe you just kind of want to get rid of a kill spell or a ramp spell or, you know, a we'll, way to kind of mess with our opponent uh, early game. Then we also have four copies of Dire Fleet Poisoner, another human pirate, two mana for a 2-2. It has flash and death touch. And when it enters the battlefield, target attacking pirate you control gets plus one, plus one, and gains death touch until end of turn. Uh, that sec that last part isn't really that relevant, but it can maybe become in handy with Kite Sail Freebooter. They are both pirates after all, so maybe it'll be relevant at some point. But the big reason we want this in the deck is because it has flash and death touch, and it's a two mana creature, so it's great for our mana curve. Um, I would say that this is very much a flex spot in the deck. You could very easily swap this out for some other two-mana black creature. Uh, I ran white for a while from Adventures for the Forgotten Realms. I thought that was okay, uh, but I think I like Dire Fleet Poisoner just a little bit better, especially since the Death Touch uh, is very useful with fight spells because we can have it fight a much larger creature, and because of Death Touch, it will still kill the opponent's creature. So it can trade up very well. Uh, then at three mana, we've got four copies of Isareth the Awakener, a three mana 3-3 three, three with, de uh, with Death Touch. And whenever it attacks, you can pay an amount of mana to bring back a creature from your graveyard with mana equal to the amount you paid. So if you pay four mana, you can bring back a Phyrexian Obliterator from your graveyard. You pay one mana, you can bring back a Shambling Gas, whatever. Uh, so it's a good way to get some stuff back if we lose it. And then we also have three copies of Dread, or I'm sorry, four copies of Dread Shade. Another three mana, three, three. But as many times as we have mana for, we can pay one black and pump it plus one, plus one until end of turn for each each time we pay. So Dreadshade can be a win condition in itself. Uh, it can basically, if you, it's a great way to sort of use your mana for the turn. If you have mana you're not going to use, uh, get some extra damage in. It can also uh, deal with creatures that are much larger than it by pumping it. So it's a really just solid, flexible card. 
Then, of course, we have our four copies of Phyrexian Obliterator. And moving on to the mana base, uh, we're playing... 12 copies of Snow-Covered Swamp and 4 copies of Woodland Chasm, the black-green snowland. Those are for our Blizzard Brawl. And then we're playing 4 copies each of Overgrown Tomb and Woodland Cemetery, the black-green Shockland and the black-green uh, Checkland, respectively. So, pretty straightforward. Uh, let's jump into some games. Okay, we are on the draw. Hand looks fine. I'm good with this. We got a couple of lands. We've got... Uh, you know, some nice early plays, Shambling Gas, Deadly Dispute, Kaisal Freebooter. So, I think it's pretty good. So we'll go turn one Shambling Gas. They did Mulligan, it looks like. Fabled Passage, probably some sort of a control deck. Maybe a ramp deck. Let's see here. Let's go... Uh, let's go Freebooter here. Okay, they got Growth Spiral, so yeah, it's some sort of blue-green ramp deck. Let's see what you got. Okay, Chromatic Lantern and Cultivate. Um, I think... Between those two, we could slow them down a little bit more with Cultivate, but Chromatic Lantern, any color, that's going to make it a little annoying for them to get... Other things out. Chromatic Lantern's a fun card. I love building chromatic decks. So we'll see what happens there. Okay, so they play the Cultivate. They may not be able to play Elish Norn if they're relying specifically on Chromatic Lantern to get it out there. Uh, so let's go ahead and attack with everything. And then I'm going to go ahead and play Dreadshade right away because we want to start getting in for lots of damage as quickly as possible. Alright, um, do we want to shock this? That would be probably more mana efficient. Let's go ahead and attack with everything. And then we'll play Deadly Dispute, Sacrificing Shambling Ghast. Create a token. We got another Freebooter. So let's grab you. What do you got? Shouldered Whispering One. So basically, they're playing Phyrexians <laughs> uh, that they can't actually play without a uh, Chromatic Lantern. Now, if they draw a Chromatic Lantern... Yeah, there we go. All right. So yeah, taking Chromatic Lantern definitely looks like it was the right call over Cultivate. Okay. We are once again on the draw. Um, this hand is okay. We've got lands couple of Shambling Gas. I'd like to see either a Deadly Dispute or some sort of two-drop, but... Okay, and we're up against Angels, it looks like. So let's go Snow-Covered Swamp, Shambling Gas. Okay, maybe not Angels. It's a life gain deck. I mean, sure. And then we get to do this before they get to put their life on. So that was definitely a misplay on their part. Um, let's just go here. Play another Shambling Ghast. We drew a Phyrexian Obliterator as well, which is great. Since we have Blizzard Brawl. They got another Speaker. And another Speaker. Okay. Um, let's just go... Dread Shade here, and we'll leave the Shambling Gas back for the moment so it can potentially deter them from messing with other stuff. And they're just gonna, all right, they're just gonna scoop. On to the next game, I guess. Okay, we are on the play this time, and this hand looks fine. So we'll go Swamp Shambling Gas, then probably Chasm on turn two. Would like to draw a Fight Spell for our Obliterator. Or a, a two-drop would also be fine. But so far, this hand looks pretty okay. We're not really doing anything on turn two, but other than that, we're pretty happy. Okay, blue-red. Alright, so we'll play our Chasm, and we'll just attack. 
Next turn, probably play Dreadshade. So far, we see no creatures from them. And I see still only blue-red, so... We haven't really seen enough from them yet to know what we're actually up against, but... They do now have enough mana up for counter spells. Let's play our land. They definitely have something instant speed. Um, I think we're just going to attack here. We're not going to pump. We're just going to go for it and we'll play a Phyrexian Obliterator. If they have a counter spell, they've got one. That's fine. We have a second Obliterator, so wouldn't be the end of the world. Ah, it might be a Tybalt's Trickery deck. It's probably a Tybalt's Trickery deck. Yep. This is my least favorite deck in the entire format, because you basically need an ultra-specific answer to it, and if you don't get it by turn four, you pretty much just lose. And they whiffed. What did they hit with Tybalt's Trickery? Did they hit another Tybalt's Trickery? That is extremely unfortunate for them. <laughs> okay. Well, we got lucky. Okay. So we're going first. Um, it's not a great hand, because we're not doing anything between... Or we're not doing anything before turn three, but we do have decent mana, so I guess I'll keep it. I don't love it, though. Hopefully we draw, like, a two-drop. Probably a goblin deck? Not a goblin deck. Okay, that's fine. Hey, there's a Shambling Ghast. That's pretty good. So let's just play this tapped. Play out our Shambling Ghast. Then next turn we'll Dreadshade. Hobgoblin Captain. Alright, that's fine. So, play Dreadshade. And I'm not going to attack with the Shambling Ghast. I'm sure they wouldn't block, but I want to have it back as a blocker, which will deter them from attacking, hopefully. If this is a Goblin's deck, it's not... Okay, maybe it is a Goblin's deck. Okay, so I think what we want to do here is probably get rid of Krenko. So let's go here. Blow you up. Then we draw a card, because we won the fight. And then we can attack with the Dreadshade. And then we can pump it twice to kill their other creature as well. Means we didn't really do a whole lot turn-wise, but that's fine. Okay, Legion War Boss is fine. Um, sure. I'll make a treasure here. There we go. Now it's my turn again. We'll play you. We do have the Dire Fleet Poisoner. So I think I like attacking here. We'll see if they block. They don't. Then we'll go Isareth, and we can flash out the Poisoner during their turn. Maybe they'll give me something juicy to block with it. Okay. Just a cantrip. Okay. Totally fine. Okay. 
Okay, they're gonna blow up my treasure. That's fine. Alright, we'll flash this out now just so we use our mana efficiently. Uh, let's see, what do we got in here? Just the Shambling Ghast? So I guess we will attack with both of these. And we will pay one mana to get back our Shambling Ghast. They are not going to block. So in that case, we will pump you a bunch of times, get in for 10 damage. And then I'll pay, I'll just play that tapped. This is definitely not the, uh, okay, they are playing Muxus. Okay, so now we probably lose. <laughs> Oh, goblins. Just muxus. Out of nowhere. He's good gaming us. We block this. Um, we block this. We might not be dead. 4-4, four, 4-4. Four, four, four. That's 16. To no, we're dead. Ah, uh, goblins. Okay, we're on the draw. This seems fine. Shambling Ass, Deadly Dispute, Dread Shade, Obliterator. Very nice curve there. Also, with the treasure token, could potentially get Obliterator fight spell a little early. So let's go here, and we'll just uh, attack. End the turn. We'll Deadly Dispute probably on their turn. Okay. Do that. Get a token. Okay, more Dread Shades and more Deadly Disputes. So, still no... I'm tempted here to Deadly Dispute and Deadly Dispute again. But I think the smart thing to do is to play out the Dread Shade. I don't really want to sacrifice it, obviously. This is. Uh, Dread Shade's a little too good to sacrifice. But you can also sacrifice treasure tokens to Deadly Dispute. Really, all we're looking for at this point is like a fight spell. Then we can blow up a bunch of stuff. So we just need one of the eight fight spells in our deck. Okay, they got another Goblin Anarchomancer. Alright, my turn. Alright, that is not a fight spell. Uh, let's just play you. And then, do we attack with the Dreadshade? I think we do. And if they want a double block, I can pump. But I doubt they're going to. And then here we'll play the Obliterator. It's going to make it very hard for them to attack into us, unless they've got dragons, flying creatures and stuff, which is perfectly possible. Red and green doesn't really have anything that can just get rid of the Obliterator without... Um, Messing stuff up. Okay. So that's fine. Let's go here. Uh, I'm going to sack a treasure token. Draw some cards. There's a blizzard brawl. Okay. So now they have to sacrifice five permanents, which is basically everything except for one land. And there we go. <laughs> oh, that's so satisfying. Anyway, guys, I think we're going to end it there. As always, I'll put the deck list in the description. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do. Links in the description below, so check that out as well. Otherwise, my friends, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.